Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching theCUBE live in Silicon Valley. This is Big Data SV, our event where we are covering all the action in the big data space, Strata Conference, Strata Hadoop, Hadoop World's going on in conjunction with Big Data SV, and we're pleased to be here. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm Joe, my co-host Jeff Kelly, chief data analyst at wikibon.org. Our next guest is Tendu Yokachu, Big Data GM, the GM of Big Data for SyncSort. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. Um, so SyncSort, uh, we've, you guys have been on a, a bunch of times, and we love talking with you guys. One, the team's been fantastic, but you're in an area that uh, it's constantly in the action, almost out of the action, the mainframe business, but it's, it just doesn't go away. Every big bank pretty much runs a mainframe these days, and IBM certainly is kicking back up with the mainframe mojo with the System Z announcement, of which the Cube was in New York City at the Jazz Center covering it, brings to, to, to the foreground the focus of big, large, big iron compute. So if compute is almost free, storage is almost free, you got to put it somewhere, you need more power. So we're seeing a movement back to this mainframe where you know, real big systems need to work in there. So with Linux, um, certainly you have DB2 and a bunch of stuff on the IBM mm -hmm. mainframes that they sell, but in reality, Linux is now going to be supported. Multiple silicon type innovations going on with IBM and others. So what's SyncSort doing there to stay in the mix to help those customers who have mainframes and ones that may want to buy new frame, new mainframes. You know, and I, like I said, big financial institutions are buying, buying it. Jeff, Jeff Kelly's research points to that. Certainly in big data, you need to move the data around. So what's, what's going on with you guys? Uh, when you look at the mainframe market, uh, there are uh, uh, two different uh, workloads uh, you see. One, the transactional uh, workloads that are very critical and they continue to run on the mainframe and uh, uh, you can also relate IBM's Z13 announcements around that uh, because those critical workloads are continuing to run on the mainframe. And then you have the batch workloads that have been historically created on mainframe and uh, that are just being uh, 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 more and more uh, cost uh, uh, for the organization because uh, the, they, they are priced by the MIPS even though there are some uh, efficiencies that are created by the Linux uh, on the mainframe, it's still uh, money, it's still cost uh, for the organization. So we sh see a shift in terms of uh, Hadoop being uh, so disruptive, uh, disruptive because it is really uh, creating a scalable uh, storage and uh, affordable storage and affordable data processing platform, uh, we see those workloads shifting from mainframe. So we are not uh, a, a disadvantage like some of the blue whales, uh, uh, big whales you mentioned yesterday. We don't have this uh, complete uh, business model uh, uh, created just for mainframe. We have a, a portfolio of products that really are uh, uh, covering the Unix and Linux world and uh, uh, our product line on the big data with Hadoop and uh, cloud. So we have a very good opportunity to fill that gap between the big iron and big data. And our focus has been uh, around those uh, workloads, uh, uh, moving the batch workloads yeah. from mainframe uh, to uh, big data. So explain to the folks out there, uh, Tendu, the mainframe is been kind of like this industry that's kind of been carried along from the legacy of the glass house, the big iron, the IBM days. You just mentioned, now there's new things going on that have mainframe-like characteristics, so much mainframe legacy in terms yes. of software and components, but the notion of a mainframe, which some say the cloud is the mainframe now, so which is an argument that we always have. We think mm -hmm. it's true. You distributed computing in the cloud, Amazon is a mainframe, you can look at it any way you want. But that being said, if I'm a big bank, for instance, and I'm running you know, full trading desks mm -hmm. on it, I got to have you know, I got to have a modern mainframe as well as support the legacy. So what is the difference between the, the, the old and the new? And focus more on what the packaging is with this new mainframe. You mentioned Linux, you mentioned Hadoop, you mentioned Batch. These are all concepts from the mainframe. What concepts carry over into the new modern era and what does it look like? What we see, uh, uh, we launched our Hadoop uh, Big Data product uh, second half of 2013. And 2014, uh, we were in uh, production deployments in very, very large enterprises globally. So what we uh, have seen from our customers, and uh, customers have been a really uh, great source of innovation for us, is uh, 
uh, there are use cases that are being discussed over the uh, spectrum of operational efficiency where uh, organizations are trying to sustain or uh, reduce the costs of uh, existing uh, traditional warehouse architecture uh, to the other end of the spectrum where uh, you have new go-to-market opportunities with uh, new uh, data-driven uh, applications, uh, uh, more transformative applications. So this spectrum is there. However, we see pretty much everybody, 80% uh, of our customers, uh, starting from the operational efficiency end, because it's a low-hanging fruit. And uh, having said that, low-hanging fruit doesn't mean it's an easy uh, job to do. There are several challenges uh, around that, because once you are trying to offload a data warehouse uh, uh, workload, uh, you have to really uh, prove the value of this, that it is going to help with sustaining the cost or it's going to help with uh, reducing the cost. That's really the main uh, driver uh, for that use case. So the challenges we have uh, seen are around, one, uh, I don't even know uh, what the existing workloads are exactly uh, doing. I don't understand the business logic with, because the person who wrote those SQL scripts have left a while ago. <laughs> so nobody understands this 7,000 uh, lines of uh, uh, BTEC script that somebody wrote. It would be great if somebody can understand and recreate that uh, in the Hadoop platform. So that's number one challenge. And the second challenge is that in 2014, really uh, uh, that proof of value first uh, project going into production happens and uh, uh, happened and it created an opportunity to budget for 2015, where they can grow uh, uh, the cluster and serve uh, more line of businesses uh, moving forward. That's really uh, critical. However, there is uh, such a rapidly evol evolving and rapidly improving uh, stack of technologies. You see uh, additional projects in the Apache uh, Hadoop uh, that appearing every uh, two months, every three months, which is great because the technology optimization has to happen for platform to be stable. However, it's challenging for the organizations. So we started seeing uh, our customers uh, being concerned. Look, I'm just trying to get this pro production deployment stabilized and run in Hadoop MapReduce. Now everybody is talking about everybody is talking about Tez. Tell me which one is going to win and mm -hmm. how should I uh, uh, future-proof my uh, processes. So that's the number two challenge. So what uh, we are offering, uh, uh, it, it creates a big opportunity for companies like us. We have been a, a big uh, believer for the open source uh, Hadoop project, uh, and we have been contributing to that, uh, partnering with Cloudera, HortonWorks, uh, Mapar, uh, all major uh, Hadoop vendors. And uh, it's an opportunity for us because all Hadoop vendors had to focus on stabilizing the platform and I I even making it a platform, right, from uh, mm -hmm. being a MapReduce batch processing uh, framework on distributed file system to uh, being a, a platform for big data where multiple workloads can run. Focus has been there. It's an opportunity for us. We just launched last week our uh, new big data edition, and that uh, big data edition really uh, focuses those uh, two problems, uh, an execution layer uh, that completely decouples uh, the user experience and how the data pipeline is created from the compute framework. So it's designed with flexibility. Uh, the, uh, the execution layer really decides what should be created as a map job, what should be created as a reduced job, what should be run on an edge node in the cluster, whether you are running it on your laptop, on a Windows or Unix or Linux or Hadoop today. and tomorrow in Spark is completely abstracted from the user. Mm -hmm. So future-proofing uh, that environment, that's, that's uh, very uh, exciting for us. Do you think that's been holding back the market a lot? Is, is, is confusion and, and, and concern about, well, I don't know where this is going to go. I mean, yeah. as you mentioned, the, the innovation is happening so fast in the Hadoop community, which is, which is great, but in fact, it's almost ironic that the, the, the level of innovation is actually stalling the market a little bit because people are now like, well, I don't know what's going to be next, and I don't want to build out an application, on, on, or I don't want to build out a platform that's going to be obsolete because I didn't, I didn't build it in a way that, that, that allows it to adapt to these new things that are going to come down the line that I have no idea what they are now, but they you know, could be very important in just two, three months from now. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say that it's stalling the market because I think it's, uh, we see the adoption uh, uh, increasing, uh, certainly. I think uh, it's uh, perhaps uh, 
uh, the adoption is not as fast as uh, we would like. Because the value is still there. Exactly, uh, the value is still there, and uh, I think uh, the major challenge is really uh, finding the skill sets and uh, having that proof of value project that uh, the internal stakeholders can buy in. Mm -hmm. That has been uh, the common challenge. And uh, we do work with our customers. Uh, we work with them to kind of help with those projects. Mm -hmm. And that's why companies offering end-to-end -end solutions for uh, those uh, use cases are uh, very critical uh, for accelerating the Hadoop adoption. Mm -hmm. like, uh, we have this project Silk. It's a tool, for example, for visualizing uh, SQL scripts, uh, legacy uh, workloads. And now uh, a new release of that can generate automatically uh, jobs uh, that are going to offload the mm -hmm. uh, workload to Hadoop. Those kind of end-to-end uh, -end solutions are critical for the adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, so talk a little bit about uh, some sort of strategy to grow to grow your big data part of the business. Mm -hmm. um, you, you made some acquisitions, uh, William Data Systems you acquired recently. Uh, talk about the role of acquisitions, organic growth, uh, as well as the partnerships, which you touched on, which mm -hmm. are also critical. Uh, what's your strategy there to kind of grow this business? Our strategy is uh, basically uh, continue investing, and continue investing in uh, many uh, fronts. Uh, continue investing in the open source project, because uh, making that enterprise ready and partnering with the open source uh, Hadoop vendors, uh, we are a big believer of the Apache project. We will continue investing that. Uh, the second investment is uh, organically uh, for innovation, uh, for uh, uh, th for example, the Hadoop product DMXH, our uh, launch, the Silk project, uh, the big frame uh, uh, initiative that we just launched with Clouder and Cognizant for mainframe offload, innovation uh, uh, organically. And the third uh, investment around the acquisitions. And the William Data acquisition is uh, very complementary to that. We ultimately want to uh, make all data accessible in the uh, uh, new big data platform, in the Hadoop platform. In order to make all data accessible, all data includes both social tweet uh, feeds like JSON, it includes clickstream data in uh, web logs, it includes uh, legacy data from relational databases, whether it's uh, on the Unix systems or on mainframe. So William Data Systems is a great example of that because uh, they basically have uh, network uh, telemetry data and security data on mainframes. If we look at this uh, re-architecting uh, the mainframe uh, uh, data warehouse on the Hadoop platform, this data is critical mm -hmm. because uh, you see uh, common use cases, uh, customer uh, churn analysis, you see common use cases about security of the platforms, security data and network telemetry data being uh, available on Hadoop or being available uh, as part of our Splunk uh, partnership, uh, feeding into Splunk, is uh, very uh, critical and complementary to that. Uh, make data accessible and uh, also offer end-to-end -end solutions so the user, uh, users uh, can future-proof their big data uh, processes for uh, emerging compute frameworks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about needing to take a platform approach. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got to ask you about the, you know, the, the big news this week was the announcement of the open data platform. Mm -hmm. um, and there's you know, pretty strong opinions on both sides, pro and con. Um, where do you come down on that? Does it need a, a new consortium such as the open data platform to standardize around the core Hadoop? Or do you think the open source community can, can, can handle that job just fine? Uh, there is already an open core uh, for Hadoop. It's Apache Hadoop project. Uh, however, uh, I think it's too early uh, to uh, comment on it, uh, because uh, we have to yet see what will come out of it. Uh, because uh, the claim is uh, to have Hadoop adoption accelerated. And if it helps with that, great, right? Uh, it just kind of uh, creates another, uh, uh, it, it, as long as it does not fork from Apache Hadoop, and it does not uh, really uh, 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 become an obstacle in terms of the innovation that happen, happens in the Apache Hadoop mm -hmm. project, that's fine. I would like to see a little bit more uh, in terms of what kind of initiatives are they uh, going to bring. Hortonworks a couple of weeks ago announced that they will be uh, partnering with the customers and having customers uh, get involved with the data governance, for example. Mm -hmm. And data governance is certainly a challenge, especially in the financial services or healthcare uh, 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 life uh, uh, sciences. So if there is an initiative that comes out of it uh, as part of this uh, data platform uh, that's going to serve certain uh, 
uh, challenges in the adoption uh, we have to see. Yeah. It, it I mean, it's yeah. very early days, but yeah, then it's, it's interesting, early. though, how, how, how quickly opinions uh, were formed around it. So I got to ask you about the IBM. Do you think they have a, um, a System Z winner here? When you looked at that announcement, what do you think about the overall mainframe direction? Overall mainframe direction, I think uh, um, mainframe uh, uh, is uh, somewhat interesting because, because it's so powerful in terms of the transactional uh, workloads. Uh, and uh, mainframe uh, users are also open uh, to the fact that anything that kind of creates efficiency reduces the pricing or the charges that they are paying by MIPS. They are quite open-minded. So I think uh, Z13 is uh, great for certain uh, type of uh, workloads, like uh, hundreds of Cyber Mo Monday's uh, data being processed, and uh, IBM has uh, uh, quite ambitious uh, uh, goals around that. Great for those uh, workloads. Uh, IBM's uh, strategy in terms of the Hadoop uh, uh, having a big as a uh, uh, as their own version of Hadoop instead of going, uh, for example, now with the partnership with Hortonworks, uh, has been probably uh, a little bit more challenging uh, overall uh, uh, strategy. I, I, I think I still think, despite the fact that Z13 is very, very powerful and suitable for certain workloads, there will be quite a lot of uh, offloading happening from mainframe to uh, more affordable uh, platforms like Hadoop. Tendu, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I want to ask you one final question. For the folks out there, when should they call you guys at SyncSort? I mean, you know, do they just say, hey, I have a mainframe, they call you, or I want to you know, sunset certain things, bring in new. When do you guys engage with, with new customers and existing customers? Uh, with uh, uh, both, uh, for new customers and existing customers, you basically call us uh, when you have a, a data pipeline that uh, you have uh, expansive workloads that you want to open the traditional data warehouse or mainframe uh, to Hadoop, and you want to create a data pipeline that's future-proof, that you don't have to worry about whether it's going to run on MapReduce or Spark or Tez or on-premise or uh, on cloud. If you want to have complete uh, user experience decoupled while taking advantage of running natively in uh, the platform, which is the case for us, then you call us. Okay, we are here inside theCUBE, live in Silicon Valley for theCUBE. Big Data SV in conjunction with Strata, Hadoop, Strata Conference, and Hadoop World. This is theCUBE, all the Big Data Week action here happening at the Fairmont Hotel. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>